I'll call to order the Monday, January 26th meeting of the Common Council. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll have the roll call. Alderperson Diaz. Here. Alderperson Linder. Here. Alderperson McGilvery. Here. Alderperson Riki. Here. Alderperson Steiner. Here. Alderperson Touche. Present. And Alderperson Yours. Here. And Mayor Hokemer is absent and excused this evening, so Council President Doyle is filling in. Thank you, Ms. Schofield, and thank you all for your attendance this evening. Next on the agenda, we have public comment. If anyone wishes to speak at this time, please come and sign in at the podium, and you may make your comments. Anyone from the public wish to speak? <laughs> All right, third and final call. Moving on, um, we have the approval of the minutes from the January 12th, 2015 Common Council meeting. Is there a motion? Okay, we have a motion by Alder Riki. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Yours. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. Next, we have mayor's business. Um, since Mayor Hokemer is not here this evening, we do not have anything for this agenda item. Next up, we have the administrator's report. Mr. Burns. Yeah, thank you. A couple updates this evening. Uh, the city has submitted its north neighborhood plan to the city of Madison for their approval, which is required under our current inter intergovernmental cooperation agreement since it's in the Five Plains planning area. That uh, neighborhood plan went before the City of Madison Plan Commission earlier this evening, and the Plan Commission did recommend approval of that plan. That will go to the City of Madison uh, next council meeting, uh, I believe on February 3rd. Uh, that North Neighborhood Plan is also scheduled to come back to the City of Verona Plan Commission next Monday for consideration, and then uh, anticipating that that would be on the next City of Verona Council agenda as well for potential adoption by the City Council on February 9th. City's library director, Brian Simons, has announced that uh, he will be leaving to take a different position. Uh, Brian Simons is going to be uh, taking on the head uh, position for the Brown County Library System up in Green Bay. Uh, his last day with the city is going to be February 11th, so we thank Brian for all of his uh, years of service to the city of Verona and everything he's done for the, the Verona Library and the community and wish him well in his new endeavor. And then finally, the Dane County Cities and Villages meeting uh, that had been scheduled for January 28th has been canceled. The next regular meeting of Dane County Cities and Villages will take place on March 11th in the city of Middleton. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, who's going to be in charge of the library then when Brian, after Brian's gone? The assistant director, uh, Stacey Burkhart, uh, is uh, anticipated to be the acting director. Um, I've been uh, I'm trading messages back and forth with the library board president, and I believe the library board is going to be discussing um, that at the next meeting for whether or not to appoint an official interim director and what the recruitment process is going to be. But uh, I know currently uh, Brian Simons has been working <coughs> with Ms. Burkhart uh, to make sure that uh, she can fill in until there's a more permanent uh, assignment made. Thank you. Alder McGilvery. I'm sorry, Bill. What 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 did you, that kind of cut me off guard? What did you say his last date is going to be? His last day is February 11th. All right. And am, am I assuming we have started the uh, advertising process for filling that position? Uh, at this point, I don't believe that an any advertising has been started. Um, again, I've been trading messages with the, the library board president um, to discuss the process, and I believe the library board is planning to discuss that at their next meeting. So okay. um, the announcement was just made last week, so this is very new information, but um, starting that process to coordinate with the library board on what their plans are. And if I could just ask our representatives on the library board, Brad, did you have any idea, or has there been any kind of discussion that's gone out via email? Uh, formally, um, we were announced, he announced that at our last meeting, and then he wanted to wait to announce it to the public and to the city until he could talk with Brown County officials so that he could not have an overlap or be not working for a while. And uh, so February 11th is the day that we formally can start doing things. 
Uh, there will be some stuff that we'll probably talk about at the library board meeting, and one of them will probably be the, the way that our leadership team will develop. So I, I can't uh, say too much formally, but uh, that's what I know at this time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the questions and comments. Are there any further questions or comments for Mr. Burns? Thank you for your report. Um, next on the agenda, we have the engineer's report on the status of public works projects throughout the city. Mr. Gunlock. Thank you. Um, two quick items this evening. The first is the 2015 street rehabilitation project. Uh, that project is being advertised for bids starting this week with a February 19th, 2015 bid date. Uh, the project combines uh, last year's pulverize and overlay work that was postponed with uh, work that is scheduled for this year. Uh, streets included under the project are, bas are portions of Bas Basswood Avenue, Tamarack Way, Tamarack Court, North Nine Mound Road, South Nine Mound Road, Paoli Street, Valley View Street, and Valley View Court. Um, all work is scheduled to be completed by uh, July 15th. And the last project is the Locust Drive Bridge Widening. Uh, the con construction plans and specifications have been uh, submitted to the Wisconsin Department of Transportation for review and approval. Uh, as soon as that approval is received, the project will be advertised for bids. A March uh, 2015 bid date is anticipated with construction completed in August. Uh, that completes my report for this evening. If there's questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Seeing no questions or comments, thank you for your report. Welcome. On to committee reports. Um, Mr. McGilvray, the Finance Committee. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, under item 9A1, I will make a motion to approve payment of the monthly bills in the amount of $1,265,522.23. Mr. Thank you for your motion. Alder McGilvray, is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Linder. Thank you. Um, moving on to explanation um, for the larger items from this month's bills, first being for a 2012 bond reissue uh, principal and interest payment, um, which uh, we do have specifics uh, as to what those are. If you'd like, Bill can go through those. I don't have them all memorized, but that, that payment for principal and interest on that 2012 bond reissue is $422,584.38. Uh, second being to Cornerstone Construction for the uh, new fire station, that amount $114,950. Third also for the uh, new fire and EMS building to J.H. Findorf and Sons Inc. for steel concrete labor, uh, that would be $133,691.59. And finally, to the Madison Metro Sewage District for our sewer service for quarter four of 2014, that amount $196,973.24. Thank you for the explanation. Um, you have a motion and a second before you. Are there any questions or comments for the Finance Committee? Seeing none, all those in favor of approval of the bill signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Mm -hmm. And that motion passes unanimous, unanimously. Any further business from the Finance Committee, Alder McGilvery? Um, just for the sake of information for the, the Council, we did have discussion tonight about uh, where we were in the construction process as far as expenditures. Bill's going to be working on putting together a spreadsheet and then some discussion points on that. And uh, I would imagine sometime in the next month we'd be seeing something. Thank you. Um, next up, agenda item 9B, Public Works Sewer and Water Committee. Alder Touche. Thank you, Madam President. Under, under, under item 9B1, I would like to make a motion to authorize the city administrator to settle a claim filed by Gina Lance for damage to a vehicle from a city plow not to exceed $6,000. We have a motion by Alder Touche. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Diaz. By way of explanation, on January 9th of this year, a city plow truck backed into a parked vehicle in a community park parking lot while clearing snow from the lot. There was significant damage to the vehicle, which is owned by Gina Lance. Ms. Lance has filed a claim with the city seeking payment for the cost of the repair 
to the damage of the vehicle plus the cost of a rental car until the repairs are complete. Um, if, if, if there's a attach your packet, um, the claim is also included along with the estimate details. If there's any questions. Thank you for the explanation. Are there any questions or comments for the committee? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 That motion passes unanimously. Any further business from the Public Works Committee? None. Thank you, Alder Touche. Um, next on the agenda, under old business, we have a discussion and possible action regarding the potential pur purchase of property at 108 South Franklin Street. Um, at this time, we could make a motion to convene in closed session. Alder, yours? I'll make a motion. Uh, that the Common Council may convene in closed session as authorized by Section 19.85, Parent 1, Parent E of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. The Common Council may reconvene an open session to take action on the closed session item. Thank you for the motion, Alder Yours. Is there a second? Second by Alder Linder. Um, this Vote calls for a roll call vote. Ms. Schofield? Alderperson Riki? No. Alderperson Steiner? Aye. Alderperson Touche? Aye. Alderperson Yers? Aye. Alderperson Diaz? No. Alderperson Linder? Aye. And Alderperson McGilvery? Aye. Okay, and that motion passes. So we will convene in closed session to discuss this agenda item and then reconvene afterwards. Careful driving home, Chief.
time for location and mm -hmm. on offer. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your patience. We're now back in open session. Next on the agenda, um, we have item number 11 under new business. We have a discussion and possible action regarding the approval of operator licenses. Ms. Schofield? We have three operator licenses for approval from Kimberly Judd for Montes, Chris Ann Hopwood at Mr. Brew's Tap House, and Brogan Engelkins at Cahoots. Move approval. Thank you. Second. We have a motion from Alder Touche, seconded by Alder Yours. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And that motion passes unanimously. Next on the agenda, we have item number 12, announcements. Alder Steiner, any announcements this evening? No, President. No? All right. Um, then a motion to adjourn would be in order. A motion by Alder Yours. Do we have a second? Second, second by Alder Riki. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes and we are adjourned. Thank you.